Look at the story of Fir'aun. Look at the role of the wicked advisors and the donkeys of Fir'aun. As powerful as Fir'aun was, he couldn't do the things he wanted to do without the evil shiyukh of his time. Fir'aun. Fir'aun was mentioned in the Quran 74 times in 67 different verses. There's a reason why he's mentioned so often in the Quran. The Fir'auns are always reappearing. The Fir'aunic tactics are always reoccurring. They're recurring. وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ ذَرُونِ أَقْتُ الْمُوسَىٰ وَلْيَدْعُ رَبَّهِ إِنِّي أَخَافُ وَنْ يُبَدِّلَ دِينَكُمْ Fir'aun gathers his advisors, his shiyukh. He tells them, let me kill Musa, alayhi salam. Like today, the baby Fir'auns, and the big ones as well, along with them, they want the righteous dead or in prisons. And he said, Fir'aun said, let him call his Lord. Fir'aun is there in Allah. إِنِّي أَخَافُ وَنْ يُبَدِّلَ دِينَكُمْ he says, I fear that, may, that he may change your religion. Or that he may cause mischief to appear in the land. Fir'aun, the man who said, I am your supreme Lord. I'm your supreme Lord. He tells people, I don't know of a Lord but me. What's holding you back, Fir'aun? Why don't you kill Musa? Can anyone stop him? Even the tyranny in this verse shows you what kind of man he is. He says, let me kill Musa. And he gets arrogant with Allah. Let him go call his Lord. Let Musa go bring his Lord. I'm not afraid of his Lord. But you my advisors, you my shuyukh, I want to consult with you. Why? Because it's Fir'aun as big of a tyrant and he, as he was, he couldn't kill Musa on his own. He needed his advisors, his salat shiyukh, the wicked ulama, the donkeys of the rulers. The man who said, I'm your supreme Lord is telling his shiyukh, let me kill Musa. I fear Musa, who's a messenger of Allah, is going to spread mischief. Fir'aun feared a public outcry. He was arrogant with Allah, but he feared the masses. So he went to the devilish scholars for support. Zaruni Aqtul Musa, he was in reality saying the Fir'aun, to the Fir'aunic media, to his chiefs, to the advisors, to his shiukh, he's trying to tell them, convince the people Musa needs to be killed or imprisoned. The murji of Fir'aun. The Fir'aunic tactic is used today by the baby Fir'auns and the big Fir'auns as well both in the east and in the west. All the Fir'auns need donkeys to ride on to get their message across. No one listens to leaders. That's why they surround themselves with these ulama. Fir'aun smears the image of Musa with two charges. He wants to change your religion, meaning he wants to make a coup. He's in reality saying, Musa wants me replaced he wants me replaced because if he says the religion wants to be replaced in the head of that religion is Fir'aun that means he wants Fir'aun replaced the second charge he gives on Fir'aun that he will spread mischief in today's terms that charge would be he's a terrorist he's an extremist he's helping the poor so he's doing money laundering Fir'auns always have canned charges ready to be handed out at a moment's notice. The Fir'aunic tactic back then are the same today. Different players, same game. Defending women and children from being raped is terrorism. Going back to the Quran and Sunnah is fundamentalism. Belief in Khilafah is part of Islam, that's extremism. Following the understanding of the Sahaba, that's backwardness. Defending and speaking about the weak and the oppressed of this Ummah, that's being radical. When you're on the path of Ya'budunani, La Yushrikuna Bi Shay'a, never ever ever get perturbed or agitated at names or labels thrown at you. That's the path of Musa alayhi salam, that's the path of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and that's the path of all the righteous. 
In fact, in this day and age, if the label is not given to you, then that's when you really need to check your path. When the pounds of all times run out of charges to defend people, they begin to charge people with the truth. They charge the people of the haq with the haq. They will charge the truth with being truth. Amazing. And I didn't get that from me. It's in the Quran. You see it in practice today, but it's in the Quran as well. All the problems and solutions are in the Quran. When the people of Lut charged him and they ousted him, what was Lut's crime? Ali Salam. أَخْرِجُوا آلَ لُوتٍ مِنْ قَرْيَتِكُمْ Drive Lut and his family out of your town. Why? Because they're clean and pure. He's ousted. He's driven out of his town. That means he's punished. When you're ousted, that means you're punished. Why is he being punished? What's the crime of Lot? What did Lot commit as a crime? He's being charged with being a pure and clean man. His charge? Being a pure and clean man. Notice when they said Lot was a clean man, they didn't say a tahar. That would mean just a clean and pure man. They said, يَتَطَحَّرُونَ which is فِعْلُ mustamir, meaning ongoing, continuous, exaggerated form of purity. He's too clean. His purity and cleanliness is too much. He's ongoing with it. Noble qualities become crimes when the mischief and filth are the leaders. That's why I tell you today, when one is not labeled, that's when he needs to check his path. Everything okay, brothers? Is the time up? How much more time? Okay, Shalom. Today, you know, in the news today, just today, seven uh, of our brothers, I read in a, in, in a headline news, were uh, arrested for being extremists and captured. By, by special forces in, in Tunis. And you know what their, their case was? They were caught passing out flyers, deterring people and shops from celebrating the New Year's. That was their crime. So when you flip the picture over of Lut and you look deep into it, you will see a good meaning and come out with a good feeling. What is it? If they say you're pure, you're pure. We don't want to sit with you because you're pure. We don't want to be around you because you're clean. What does that mean? What does that make the one who's saying it? That means they are in reality testifying about themselves that they're unpure filth. They are confessing to it in this life before the next life. When aspects of wala and bara become a crime or make someone an outcast for merely believing in them, what's that say? They are in reality confessing to being enemies of Islam. Let's go back and look at Fir'aun. He said to his shuyukh, to his advisors, to his people, let me kill Musa. The salafs, the murjia, and the donkeys they ride on, the munafiqeen of Fir'aun, they said, say no more leader, we got you. That's basically what they're saying. Musa's a messenger. People are starting to know him and love him. When the righteous are loved, even though they're less, they may be fewer, they love with heart and soul. And it's not that easy for Fir'aun to kill him without the support of his shiuch, who will inject the masses with false talk as you're going to see. What do you think the Fir'auns of the East and the West, why do you think they surround themselves with certain evil scholars? If the Fir'aun who was bold enough to say, I am your supreme Lord. The one who said, my path is the only path. Fir'aun is Fir'aun. Even in this verse here, he says, let Musa call his Lord. I'm not afraid of Musa's Lord. Let him call his Lord. But he wasn't bold enough to act without the help of his media and his shiuch because of fear of the masses. If the father Fir'aun to these Fir'a'in of today couldn't do it, do you think the Fir'auns of today could do their evil on their own? All that scene that I mentioned to you is in Surah Ghafir. The scene ends there. That's it. He tells his 
uh, his scholars what he wants, and the meeting ends over there. Now let's go to Surah Al-A'raf and see the continuation of scene number two. In Surah Al-A'raf, Allah said, وَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ مِنْ قَوْمِ فرعون. Now the shiyukh of Fir'aun took on to campaign for Fir'aun. They want to justify the killing of Musa. وَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ مِنْ قَوْمِ فِرْعَوْنَ أَتَذَرُ مُوسَى وَقَوْمَهُ لِيُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَيَذَرَكَ وَآلِهَتَكَ You leave Musa and his people to spread mischief in the land? You leave them to do that? أَتَذَرُ مُوسَى وَقَوْمَهُ لِيُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَيَذَرَكَ وَآلِهَتَكَ A rhetorical question. Why Fir'aun are you leaving Musa spread evil? It was Fir'aun's suggestion. But the wicked scholars were campaigning for his idea to promote the killing of Musa السلام. They were evil, making it as if they were the ones who were suggesting it. Notice what they said. They said, O oh people, O oh Fir'aun, Musa is spreading facade in the earth. He's, he's spreading mischief. Number two, Fir'aun, people. Musa, he's abandoning your religion. He's choosing another religion. And now comes Fir'aun. They make him look like the innocent, pure man and make Musa look like he's the evil one. Fir'aun suggested and wanted to kill Musa. But the wicked ulama of Fir'aun changed it around because they're evil. What's the difference between the ulama of, for example, Bashar or other tyrants like that who paved the way for their Fir'auns to massacre and kill or even worse than that, replace the laws of Allah on this earth with other laws and justify it and make it seem like it's permissible. Look at the delicate detail in both verses that I just mentioned. When Fir'aun told them in Surah Ghafir, he told his advisors as justification, Musa wants to change your religion or cause mischief. That's number one. His worry was to stay on the throne. When he said change your religion, that means my power. Because when he says, when he says Musa is trying to change your religion, that means he's trying to change me. He's trying to change me, myself. That's number one. Number two justification Fir'aun gave is Musa is spreading mischief. When the media, when the shiuch took that word, they did dirty campaigning for Fir'aun. But they were a little bit smarter. So they changed it around in the next verse. So they said, number one, لِيُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ They mentioned mischief first, then change in religion, which is changing Fir'aun. Why did they do that? Because when Fir'aun spoke, his number one worry was his power. The wicked shayukh, the advisors of him, now speaking to the masses, know that the masses care more about mischief. They want their neighborhood safe, the town safe. They, they care more about that than about Fir'aun being a leader or not a leader. That whole Indian scene over there was for the next verse. قَالَ سَنُقَتِّلُ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ وَنَسْتَحْيِي نِسَاءَهُمْ وَإِنَّا فَوْقَهُمْ قَاهِرُونَ Fir'aun says, we'll kill their sons and enslave their women and we'll have irresistible power over them. They made Fir'aun seem like a poor, innocent little man who said, okay, if you insist, I have no choice. They made him seem like poor, innocent Fir'aun as if he was merely reacting to the people and the advisors and the shiuch. This shows you the wicked yet dangerous role advisors in some ulama play to rulers when they're corrupt. What you see today is no different. Evil comes from the palaces carried on the tongues of evil scholars and through their evil media. Listen to the tale of this verse, the end of this verse. وَإِنَّا فَوْقَهُمْ قَاهِرُونَ وَإِنَّا فَوْقَهُمْ وَإِنَّا فَوْقَهُمْ قَاهِرُونَ We have indeed irresistible power over them. Fir'aun could have said, وَإِنَّا لَهُمْ قَاهِرُونَ We have irresistible power to them. Instead of فَوْقَهُمْ لَهُمْ could have been used instead of فَوْقَهُمْ In Arabic, both of them work perfectly. They can be used interchangeably. When he said over them, فَوْقَهُمْ instead of to them, لَهُمْ It shows the peak of tyranny. Many get cowardly in times like this. They don't want to speak the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to even practice the truth. 
Some are so terrified today that they are even afraid to think the truth. When the children learn and believe there's nothing wrong with the despicable fawahish like the fahisha of Qawm Lut, the fahisha that Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said, there's no sin mightier in mischief than the act of Qawm Lut. He said it's a sin that falls after the sin of killing and it might even be worse than killing. That's what he said. When they learn that such a despicable sin is normal and okay and permissible, there's nothing wrong with it. It's halal. That's istibaha. Istibaha means considering the, hal the haram halal. That's no longer a sin. It's kufr. Even if one never engaged in that particular sin. Once you normalize a fahish of that nature, all other fawahish are easy to normalize after that. The gate is then wide open for that tainted fitra that they produce to accept all types of fawahish and kufr as a norm. Al-Walid bin Abdul Malik, Amir, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Al-Walid bin Abdul Malik said, had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not mentioned the act of Qawm Lut in the Quran, I wouldn't have believed a man engages in such a behavior. People began to take this matter pertaining to education in the West more seriously after the West began to push and promote the disgusting, despicable fahisha in the schools. But many don't know nor value Tawheed because for years, way before that, way before pushing this aggressively into the curriculums, they were destroying the Tawheed in the hearts and the minds of the children. Do you really think someone who goes to public schools eight hours a day, around eight months a year, 12 years of his life, knowing what goes on in these schools, you think he will come out loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the deen and Tawheed and the Aqeedah properly? Or will he come out imitating the Kuffar and falling into their sins and traps and losing his identity in Tawheed. It's someone who mingled with them to that extent, going to grow up having the proper adawa to kuffar and kafara. Th these are not sins. These are matters of iman and kufr. Yes, there's exceptions, but rules are not based on exceptions. Aside from destroying the aqidah is another level, which is normalizing sins. Making them halal, making them believe they're halal in a norm. No, I can never love Berkey, name in Sahawali, Hashra, Nima Hassel for Smena Sot, Nafiso, the Slan, Clan and Lahuna Barra, Sahi Alam Hadden Kuzne, when you tell Alam here with the Munkuze, but no Allah Talana Hoti, Ladam. أربعين واحد راحوا بجدي راحوا هون زر صاروخ بيتهم في أجر في إيش دولة حضا يعني نوم في طلعت نانتي أربع شاف خالتي طائرة لألا ما لوا بس أفهم ليش عب بتربني يعني عكم لو يضعيف بس هيك كو حجر طار بنا كرتون عطير من بنا حجر طالعنا ولد عمي شباب واحد عبصلي هيك ساجد عبصلي كان كلهم مش ما أحلاهم ريحة المسك طلعت منهم ما بضحكوا إذا تحكي إذا تشوف إذا تحكي ما مين تصيح يا عباس محمود ولا ابن عمي ابنه مات ولا في مرة حامل هذا شهرة جوزة مخبيلة مصاري لحتى تولد راح سبحان الله ونعم الوكيل ما الله بلس مون بأبيت سوش يروك ما ومن who were able to stand for such tyrants. May Allah bless. What do they do? 
who want their our men back and they dis, get dishonored and tortured. May Allah bless hands that raise such honorable women. May Allah hasten their release and the release of those who protested for their release because they're all in prison. May Allah paralyze. May Allah paralyze. May Allah destroy. May Allah humiliate any hands that touch them or attempt to touch them or those hands who, or those mouths who order those to touch them. حتى إذا استيأس الرسل وظنوا أنهم قد كذبوا جاءهم نصرنا فنجي من نشاء When the messengers give up When it's the darkest of the darkest time When it's the darkest of the darkest time It's the wisdom of Allah That at the darkest time The suffering comes to an end And victory comes Why? Because Allah wants you to enjoy Allah wants you to enjoy the taste of victory how can you enjoy the taste of victory if it comes to you like a piece of cake? If it comes to you on a gold platter? How can you enjoy it? Allah wants you and I ask Allah, وَيَقُولُونَ مَتَاهُ قُلْ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَكُونَ قَرِيبًا May it be near, may Allah ease their hardship. وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدُ وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَىٰ لَنْ شَائِكًا أَوْ شِبْهَ دَرْبٍ مُسْتَحِيلٍ دربا طويلا شائكا أو شبه درب مستحيل لا درب يوصل غيره لا درب يوصل غيره مع أنه درب طويل مع أنه درب طويل مع أنه درب طويل, مع أنه درب طويل